Here are five takeaways from the extended history. The minus 59% value crash as of March 2020 is on the very extreme side of an almost 200-year history. Yet over the long run, value crashes of minus 50% appear normal. Well, they happened at least four times before the current one, if you count the minus 49% crash in 1862. Without the help of long history, and before the current drawdown, investors might have mistaken value investing as safe. Back in 2006, which is when systematic value investing started to go mainstream, investors could see just one value crash of minus 54% back in 1932. It was easy to dismiss it as part of a very different history that was no longer relevant. Investors made a similar and correct assumption about price momentum before it crashed in 2009. With the help of extended history, the hypothetical 2006 value investor, warned about the periodic crashes, would estimate values risk differently, and as a result, would be less hurt during the current drawdown. I think it's time for Excel to recognize dates before 1900. 1940 to 2006 was an exceptionally safe period for value investing compared to its full history. And this tailwind helped many great value investors, creating unrealistically high expectations for value investing. For example, the Graham Newman partnership years only saw the lowest value drawdown of minus 40% in 1939, just three years after their partnership started. From then on, value rallied with minimal drawdowns during the 20 years that they operated with astonishing 20% per year returns, 13% of which could be attributed to the top decile of book to value Fama French portfolio. Warren Buffett was also a benefactor of the 50 year low crash risk period that ended around 2006. He is now navigating the worst value drawdown in his very long investment career. Value investing, like any investing, looks like a never-ending series of drawdowns, with tiny intervals of absolute gains in between. For example, out of 2,332 months of values history, only 266 were not in drawdown, slightly over 10%. And yet when you look at the cumulative return, you barely notice the drawdowns, because the long-term compounding starts to deliver its magic. In the end, I believe all investing comes down to balancing the two outcomes, drawdowns and average returns. And deep history can help us set the right expectations about both. So here we are, in a very different time and economy, and value crashed again. Unfortunately, 2020 demonstrates that history does repeat itself, albeit in unexpected ways. Only in 1904 was the crash similar to its current strength. The current value crash is challenging investors to make a tough decision. Is value investing the riskiest or the safest thing to do now? If history is to continue repeating itself, then value should do pretty well going forward.